what are some tips that homeowners can do to prevent mold growth in their home? Great question. So uh, in order for mold growth to occur, you have to have a mold spore, a food source and moisture. And so when you open and close doors to your house or your, or your business, you're going to have air exchange. And every time that happens, mold spores are coming in and mold spores are going out with the airflow. So we really can't do anything about mold coming into a structure. Uh, so then we look at uh, a food source and a food source is going to be anything organic that can be dust. It could be drywall. It could be wood. So we really can't do anything about that because all of our homes and businesses are constructed that way. So what we do look at is we look at moisture. And if we can control the moisture, we can control mold. If we have a humidity level higher than 55%, some say 60%, that's when we're gonna to start to see active mold growth. So we can control that moisture level by uh, maintaining humidity in structures. We can use the HVAC uh, systems as well. There are air filtration devices that we're using nowadays that can exchange air into structures. Uh, so basically, dehumidification is the number one thing. In, in our area, we have basements. Those basements are going to go through uh, you know, seasonal change. And when that change occurs, humidity is going to be a problem. And so I always tell my clients that every basement should always have a 70-pint dehumidifier plugged in, actively working, draining into some type of drain, and set to the lowest setting so that we can control that humidity in that environment so we don't have mold growth. Can you speak specifically then to bathrooms and then attics? Absolutely. So our bathrooms are also crucial area in our structures. So bathrooms are always going to have high humidity. The same thing with utility rooms. When we've got a, a dryer, a washer dryer, we've got a shower. Um, some people have saunas. We want to make sure that the air in that area is controlled and that should be vented or ducted to the outside of the structure. And um, of course, when you're taking a shower, a hot steamy shower, make sure that the bathroom vent fan is turned on and it's running. And, and, and when you get out of the shower, leave the door to the bathroom open, leave that vent fan turned on so it's exhausting that humidity outside of the structure, you know, for 10 to 20 minutes after your shower is over with. And so for attics and crawl spaces, what do you recommend for those? Because I see a lot of mold in both and I'm sure you see a lot more than I do. Absolutely. We've become so hypersensitive to efficiencies. And so what we think is we should seal up our house and make it as airtight as we possibly can. And for mold growth, that's not the truth. The truth is we want to have cross ventilation in those areas so that we have airflow coming in and we've got airflow going back out. What that's going to do is that airflow is going to pass over the substrate. It's not going to allow mold growth to occur. We also don't want to over insulate these areas where we could potentially cover up soffit vents we could block that airflow and the mechanics of the structure of the attics or the crawl spaces from properly working the way they're supposed to and the way that they're designed to.